Today, I'll be poaching sea bass with Jeff Marlowe at the Oaks Country Club, then visiting Go Fresh for the best fruits, veggies, and herbs. And finally, back to my test kitchen to prepare a salmon filet to present for this week's lesson, poaching. Hi, I'm Remy, and I started cooking when I was four. When I turned 10, I learned all I could from my home kitchen, so I partnered with Oklahoma State's Culinary Arts Program. Now, I travel to the best chefs around, learning the curriculum and techniques, then seek out the freshest, most healthy ingredients to create dishes to be judged by the chefs that inspired them. Just call me the Culinary Kid. We're at the Oaks Country Club, and I'm here with Chef Jeff Morla. Welcome to the Oaks Country Club, Chef Remy. So, what are we doing today, Chef? Well, actually, Remy, we're going to teach you how to poach fish. It's a very simple cooking method. Uh, usually, people would think of it on the stove top. Uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you hear poached is probably poached eggs. And that's not what we're actually going to be poaching today. We're going to be poaching a blue nose sea bass, also known as the Atlantic butterfish. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever done any poaching yourself, Remy? No. <laughs> you haven't? Well, we're going to teach you how. And we're actually going to be poaching in the oven today instead of the stovetop. So it's going to be kind of a new method and kind of a new style. I'm ready to get started. So what okay. we got here, Remy, is we got all our citrus cut up. Mm -hmm. We're ready for that step. Now I think what we want to do is go ahead and put our oil in our pan, okay? Okay. So we're using olive oil, mm -hmm. also known as pomace oil, when it's not extra virgin. And this is just a, a very basic olive oil. And it's, it's good for when you're sauteing and you're, and you're poaching and just cooking with because mm -hmm. you don't need a, a very high-end oil that costs a lot of money. You just want to uh, cook with pomace oil, okay? Mm -hmm. So so pomace oil is basically just olive oil, right? Yeah, just, a, just an olive oil, not the extra, extra virgin. So what we're going to do is put about two cups in here, okay? Mm -hmm. So is this going to be kind of like a sauce or what is it? No, it's not going to be a sauce. This is actually going to be our liquid that we're going to poach in. So this mm -hmm. is going to be cooking our our um, fish today, Remy. Okay. Um, you could actually at the end use it for a little bit of a sauce if you wanted to ladle some over your fish. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're gonna. I've got another surprise for you here at the end of what we're going to do with this fish. Okay. Okay. So today we're just going to be poaching with this liquid. Okay. So I'm going to add about. See if I can get it right. I bet you can. Da, 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 da. And stop. Pretty good. Good job, Chef. Thanks. So how'd I do? Good? You did great. I think it's pretty good. Give me some whoop whoop there. Alright, good job, kiddo. <laughs> Let's go ahead and now what we want to do, Rem, mm -hmm. is we want to go ahead and, and, and put our fish in. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab a piece of fish here and go ahead and place it in the oil. Go ahead. So why are you using blue nose sea bass? Well, we're using sea bass because it's a nice flaky fish, okay? Mm -hmm. Poaching it and baking it, it kind of holds itself together. And when it's, bake, and it's, when it's poaching this liquid, it's going to kind of uh, shrink down a little bit and, and tighten up, and it'll hold itself all together. When we come out and we're ready to eat, it'll just be really flaky with a knife. It'll just be so tender. So that's why we're using this fish today, okay? So now what we want to do with our citruses that we have, Rim, is we want to take... Uh, Two of our limes, and we want to go ahead and squeeze them off in there. My lime. Squeeze it in, in there. Just put it on in there. And then two, right? Yep. Yeah. Two. There you go. Good job. That was the flavor in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then let's go ahead and do one of our lemons. No seeds in there. I'm gonna squirt this everywhere. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Very nicely done. Thank you. Done it like a pro. Okay, now let's go ahead and put two of our quarters of oranges in there. Okay, Rim? Okay. So, ah, this one's hard. You can get this. You know, make, you make this look easy. You got your lemons, you got your limes, you got your oranges. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I think we're ready for our herbs. Let's go ahead and take our gloves off now. Okay. Now that we've got our fish in there mm -hmm. and our citrus, I'll take your gloves and I'll throw them here in the trash. Okay. And now we're ready to put our herbs in there. Okay. okay? 
So, <clears throat> what, what herbs do we have? What we have here today is we have a fresh rosemary, mm -hmm. a fresh sage, and a fresh basil. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and break up our herbs mm -hmm. and uh, into little pieces so they all fit down in the oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why are we break them in pieces instead of just like picking them off and stuff? Well, we don't want big pieces that are sticking out, especially mm -hmm. with the rosemary because rosemary is really dry. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an old, it's like a Christmas tree. You ever bought a fresh Christmas tree? Yep. It's in, and those things are so dry, you gotta keep water in them. Mm -hmm. if, they, if it was to catch on fire, just poof. <laughs> so, uh, rosemary, when it's when it's, it doesn't have oil on it, it would burn up and, and uh, get really black in the oven. So we don't want it to do that, so we want it to be merged completely in the oil. And what we want to do is grab a little uh, fresh sage. So, what is sage exactly? You know, sage is a Mediterranean herb, mm -hmm. and they used it back in the old days as, as uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And witch doctors used it as, you know, healing remedies. Mm -hmm. So, but today we're using it as cooking. Mm -hmm. So now we're adding some basil, right? Yep. And don't you know a little something about basil? Did you know that basil um, in Greek means king? So kind of like oh, wow. all hail the king. So is that kind of the king of the herbs? Yeah, I guess so. I will, it's my favorite herb, so I would call it the king of the herbs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Remy, now I think we're ready to go. I, I, all we need is a little garlic and some salt and pepper. Composting. Okay. You want to go ahead and add six or seven cloves there Five. to them? Excellent. You should go ahead and add, add them to mine, too, so my hands don't smell like garlic. <laughs> this is where we need the gloves again, so our hands aren't garlicky. All right, now then put us a, a couple of pinches of salt and pepper over the top of those. Mm -hmm. Excellent, good job. Very nice, Remy. Good job. They're ready to go into the oven. So okay. you ready to put these into the oven and, and let them poach? Okay. All right, let's go, kid. Let's go. So how high is the temperature going to be? Um, we're actually going to cook this at 300 degrees, Rem, mm -hmm. because we don't want it too high. And this is a, a commercial convection oven, mm -hmm. and it's uh, cooking off of a flowing of air. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to cook it at 300 degrees so our oil doesn't actually burn mm -hmm. and it doesn't burn our herbs up and because uh, uh, poaching is a slow cooking method. Mm -hmm. um, we, don't, we don't ever want it to really reach a rapid boil. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we've got it set at a low temperature like that. And it's going to take about 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes to cook. Okay. Okay. Coming up, gourmet cooking made so easy even a 10-year-old can do it. Stay tuned. <laughs> we at Metro Appliances and More had the opportunity to partner with a 10-year-old chef. After meeting with Remy, I knew that we wanted to help her communicate her message of teaching young children how to cook and eat healthy. It's been an amazing journey so far and I couldn't be more pleased. I want to encourage you to watch the new series, The Culinary Kid with Remy. She's a lot of fun and it's going to be great. Hey friends, do you want to be a chef? Well listen to this. I recently won the National Lunch My Dream contest. My dream is for all kids to be healthy. I created the Chef Challenge, which means cook healthy, exercise frequently. I think if you learn to cook, you'll eat healthier. If you exercise, you'll be healthier. Take the three month challenge and become a chef. It's easy to sign up and it's free. The prize is too. But the real prize is a healthier you. Join the fun? Go to my website, theculinarykid.com. Okay, Remy. Well, while our uh, fish is in the oven poaching, well, I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to saute a nice little, uh, we'll make a little ragu, a little bean ragu for our, to, to put our fish on top of. What we want to do, uh, and sauteing is actually, it's, it's French for jumping. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more we got, the more flavors we invite to our party, the better, right? So this is just like a big old party right here. Whoa, everybody's that's awesome. everybody's just hopping and jumping. And that's Whoa. what you call, that's what you call sauteing. 
That's awesome. It must be hot. Isn't it? Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, Graham. What we want to do now is I want to get some beans mm -hmm. for our. So what kind of beans are these? These are uh, great northern white beans. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we keep them in liquid. So they don't dry out. And that's probably plenty for our dish. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that for me. All right, thank you. So what we're gonna do, Remy, is come over here and we're just gonna add our beans to our mm -hmm. dish. Mm -hmm. All right, got about that much. Probably about the same over in there. All right. And then one more thing I wanna put in there, mm -hmm. other than salt and pepper and chicken stock, is a little salt, a little pepper. All in one. All in one. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna add some spinach. Mm -hmm. So, do you know anything about spinach? Yeah, uh, you know, spinach, original, its original name was uh, Florentine, and it came from Prince, Princess Florentine that had her chefs and cooks go out and find her a new, a new uh, she just wanted something new. Mm -hmm. So they went out and found this vegetable, and she really loved it, and mm -hmm. before you knew it, before you know it, it was called Florentine, and so it originated from Princess Florentine. So anytime you go out to a restaurant, Remy, uh -huh. and you see a dish that has uh, Florentine in it, uh -huh. you know you're going to get spinach. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we want to add about four ounces of chicken stock. Mm -hmm. Wow, that really it. is jumpy. Yeah, it is. Okay, Remy, now that we've got our uh, ragu all sauteed up and mm -hmm. seasoned and ready to go, I think our fish is just about done, so let's go ahead and grab it out of the oven, okay? Okay. Okay, Remy. So now what we want to do is, let me borrow your slotted spoon. I'm going to go ahead and take the fish out of our nice poaching liquid. Mm-hmm. Be careful because it's very hot. See that slotted spoon, it helps all the oil run away. Mm -hmm. And we're going to place that fish right there on top of our ragu, okay? Okay. Remember that skill is very hot now, kid. So just get... Okay, now let me take your hot skillet. I'm gonna move it out of the way because we gotta okay. finish the final touches here real quick. What we wanna do, rim, mm -hmm. rim, we wanna clean the rim. <laughs> okay, so we wanna go around our, our wow. bowl here and have a nice little clean nice, rim. Nice presentation. Uh huh. Presentation is one of the keys. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is take a little balsamic reduction. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna stripe our fish, okay? Ooh. Excellent. Good job. One more garnish, Remy. Mm -hmm. Let's stick our fresh clove of rosemary right in the center of it. Kind of stick it in there. There you go. Now we're ready. The bon appetit. Ooh, that looks good. You ready to try it out? I'm gonna eat Give it me some woo woo first. It looks, it looks good job. Good. Well really done, chef. Eat it, well though. done, chef. I'm not really gonna eat it. So not, like, it's too pretty it. to eat. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's try it. I like eating it. Mm -hmm. It's very. It looks very tender too. Hot. Mm. Delicious. Is it too hot, kiddo? It's like a hot piece of broccoli in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's too hot. Well, I really love this dish, and I want to thank Chef Jeff for helping me learn this technique. And um, I just can't wait to put this technique to practice. Excellent. Good job, Chef. Next, I'll go to the top fruit and veggie supplier, Go Fresh, for today's recipe. Stay tuned. Hi, what's your name? And how would you like me to sign your book? This sign feature print something, please. I like your style, kid. Don't miss the culinary kid. Remy, let me tell you about a few of the Thermador appliances here on your set. Right here we've got a 36 inch induction cooktop with five induction elements and also the largest induction element. Cool. What's this? Well, over here we've got our triple combination professional wall oven. You've got convection microwave, you've got a convection wall oven, and also you have a warm awesome. What's this? Well, here is our 30 inch masterpiece double wall oven. You've got convection in both ovens, and you also have electronic controls. Wow, Thermo really knows its stuff. 
well, we like to fulfill the needs of our clients. Do you make trampolines? Because I really use one of those. Um, I can get back to you on that. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you're enjoying my show. And I got another tip. This tip's about kitchen safety. And, you know, it's important that you have your parents' permission to be cooking in the kitchen. I've been told that I make cooking look really easy. Well, I've been doing it for quite some time. But guess what? Even when I'm at home or I'm on my set, I always have adult supervision. And you should too. For more information on kitchen safety, go to my website, theculinarykid.com. All right, Remy, there are three things you have to have to be a great chef. One is a sharp knife. Check. Two is a clean uniform. Check. And three, you've got to have a French accent. Say, we. Oui. We. Oui. No, no, say O U I. We. Oui. We. Oui. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that later. I was getting closer. That's great. That's actually that end of it. Yeah. I'm here with Russell Hickson at Go Fresh Produce. So, Russell, tell me about Go Fresh. Well, Remy, we are a family-owned and operated produce distribution company. We've been in business for 70 years. We service restaurants and country clubs and uh, hospitals and hotels and government institutions, things like that. Another one of the things we do is we service public school systems. And there's a grant out there that schools can get to buy fresh fruits and vegetables from all around the world. One of the schools that we service is buying a lot of star fruit this coming week. So we have a whole lot of star fruit in what do you specialize in? Mostly produce, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, we bring in products from all around the world. Uh, we bring in products from California, from Vietnam, from Italy. Uh, if they grow it, we buy it. Wow, that's a lot of places. Yeah, lots of places. We sell a lot of produce. Remy, one of the great things that we do is we buy products from local farmers, and we redistribute that product out to our customers. And it's great for our community, too. So who all do you service around? Well, actually, we have some mutual friends. I've uh, been watching your show, and some of the chefs that you've worked with are actually customers of mine. Wolfgang Puck and Bodine's and Whole Foods as well. So you've seen my show. What do you think? I think it's great. I think it's great because you're introducing a lot of culture to kids with cooking, and there's a, a lot to be said for that. I wish all my viewers could smell this great, fresh produce. I want to thank you, Russell, for showing me around, and I can't wait to use all this fresh produce in my dish. No problem, Remy. It was great having you, and I hope you enjoy the fresh produce. Back to my kitchen to prepare a salmon filet to present for this week's lesson. We're back at the test kitchen, and freshly inspired by Chef Marlowe, I'm ready to make this week's meal, which is poached salmon with a cucumber sauce, and an assorted salad with some French bread. So first I have some water in my pan and I added some vegetable broth. And this is called cormorillon, which means a poaching liquid. So I didn't um, know that the phrasing liquid was called that. Hmm. Flavoring to my liquid. So first I'm going to add some celery. Just finish cutting this up. I'm gonna add some celery. Oops. I can just drop it in there and some carrots, and then some onions. And this is called a mirepoix. Onions, celery, and carrots. Onions. Oops. Don't mess it. Okay, so now I'm going to add some lemons. I'm just going to drop these in there. And now I'm going to add some parsley. My herb. I'm just gonna lay a little bunch right there, and then I'm gonna add some basil. Just lay that right there too. And then over here I have some salmon, and I put some salt and pepper on this. And did you know that salmon is the only fish that lives in fresh and salt water? You know they really gotta make up their mind. And did you know that when they're about two or three years old, they go to the open sea? You know that's really impressive for a toddler. I couldn't even swim when I was two or three. So now I just kind of want... That's what you want. You don't want it to be boiling, uh, poaching as it cooked at a low heat. I'm going to cover it with parchment paper. So 
Now I'm just gonna kinda use my tongs to kinda push the part parchment paper down in the pan a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put the lid on my pan. And I'm going to let this poach for about five minutes. And you know, you don't really want this boiling, but you want it to kind of simmer. So now, um, I'm going to work on this rice. Um, the rice is a lemon jasmine rice. And so what I have is just jasmine rice, and it has a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice, not all the lemon. And then I'm going to zest a little bit of my lemon on here. And, you know, when you're zesting, you want the yellow part. And if you get white parts in there, it can be sour. So, let's see if I can get all the parts of the lemon. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some parsley. And did you know that lemons were also referred to as the golden apple? Because they were believed to prevent diseases like scurvy for sailors or pirates. Okay, so now... I'm just going to mix this up a little bit so I can get all my parsley dust everywhere. Let me juice. I have a wear for my rice. Okay, so now I'm going to check my sink. Okay. Well, that looks about done. So now I'm just going to take my salmon out. Get my salmon out of here. A little parsley with it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. This. Wow. These. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. So now, what I'm gonna do? Just going to set that aside right there. Okay. So now I'm going to get my rice ready. So I'm gonna grab this bowl here, and I'm just gonna put some rice in it. And I'm going to use this bowl as my mold. So what I'm really going to do is just kind of pack the rice in there. And did you know that rice is very important to many cultures? And the Chinese, my peeps, they honor rice on the Lunar New Year celebration. Remy's peeps. That's, that's cute. Get all my rice in there. Well, not all of it, but most of it. And, yeah. Okay. And you know, you really want to pack it in there. Or else it will fall apart on your plate and you'll have a blob which does not look that pretty. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna- Remy really it. moves smooth and quick in a kitchen to be 10 years old. There, and down, and then we had that. And it's really pretty, you know? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my salmon. So, take this big piece right here. We better use this thing, the spatula. Okay, and then I'm just gonna lay it gently on there like that. Does it not look pretty so far? I think it does. Okay, so anyway, now I'm going to add my cucumber sauce. And this cucumber sauce has cucumbers, some shallots, and mint, parsley, and Greek yogurt, and looks like we have some dill in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay this kind of Little blob there. So now, what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna like lay a few lemon slices to make it look pretty too. But maybe one there, and oh. And then I'm going to put some parsley on it. Sprinkle it over. And then I have my salad. And this is a salad with baby greens and some spinach, some arugula, and some pears and celery with some Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper. And you know, the dressing is really easy. It's just some canola oil with some red wine vinegar and some Dijon mustard. So now what I'm gonna do is just whisk it up a little bit so I can get it all together. And you know, I'm not gonna pour a lot on this uh, because it has a strong flavor. So I'm just gonna pour it a little bit over here, a little bit over there. So now, I'm just going to toss it so I can get all the ingredients together. Okay, so now, I'm just going to get a little, oops. Okay, that's good. And then, just kind of place it right there. 
So now I have French bread with some olive oil and balsamic vinegar. He's plated it up just like a, any chef in town would have done it. Well, I hope Chef Marlo really likes this. And for this recipe and more, just go to my website, theculinarykid.com. Time for the chef presentation. Now, this is a pass or fail, so wish me luck. Back again with Chef Jeff Marlowe. Jeff attended OSUIT Culinary Arts Program and is the executive chef at the Oaks Country Club. He loves spending time with his family, going hunting, fishing, and golfing. Chef Marlowe, inspired by the dish you gave me, I prepared poached salmon with a cucumber sauce, an assorted salad with baby greens, pears, and celery, and a lemon jasmine rice with French bread. I hope you enjoy. Well, thank you, Remy. Wow, I mean, this is, this is beautiful. Um, this plate right here could go in any fine dining restaurant in Tulsa, so very good job. You got a lot of uh, contrast going on here with the colors, um, with your salmon and your uh, white yogurt dill sauce. So you have your beautiful salad with your pears, your arugula. It just all looks very nice. So thank you so much. Let me let me dig in and try it. Very good. Try your salad here. Love pears. Pears are awesome. Mm-hmm. Very good salad. Love that dressing, it's really light. Dijon mustard is one of my favorite mustards to use. You know, and that's traditional when you're making a vinaigrette. So, tell me what you've got here. A little French bread and... Uh, some olive oil and uh, balsamic. Balsamic, just to mm -hmm. kind of go with the dish a little bit. Mm -hmm. Looks good. That's what, Bread's my weakness, as you can tell. I've got, I've eaten a lot of bread in my life to, to get this figure. Your salmon's been poached very nice. You got a great little dill sauce here, yogurt dill sauce. I taste a little cucumber in there. So I'm ready to just sit here and enjoy this dish. And I gave you two thumbs up, kiddo. Good job. Well, Chef Marlo, I'd like to thank you for the inspiration, the good food, and the passing grade. No problem. My pleasure, Remy. You've deserved it. That's it for this week's show. I can't wait for next week's lesson, right here on the Culinary Kit. Mustard on it. You can put the mustard on it. All right. C M O N. Yeah, it's an N. No. Oh yeah, no, that'd be like. Mm-hmm. <laughs>